Hi, this is Dr. J. Smith coming to you from my office to talk to you about the Easter event. The time of Easter is certainly the most important event in the calendar for us as Christians because this is when he died on Friday and then rose again on Sunday to save us from our sins. So obviously for us it's hugely important. But for Muslims, this is denied. This whole event is denied in one verse in the Quran in chapter 4 verse 157 or surah 4 ayah 157 which says for they killed him not they thought it was so another was given his image for truly he was not crucified. That denies my salvation. That denies everything that is important to me. And so that's why I want to zero in on that verse because if Christ did not die then I'm damned. And I have a five different problems with that verse in the Quran. Let's start with the internal problem, internal to the Quran itself, because the Quran cannot decide on whether or not Jesus did or did not die. In chapter 4, verse 157, it's very clear he did not die. He was not crucified. But if you go to chapter 19, verse 33, it's clear there that he did die. In fact, Jesus himself is speaking as a child, and he says, Blessed be me the day I was born, the day I die, and the day I rise again, suggesting very clearly that he did die and rise again. That's Jesus speaking himself. Now, some people say, well, yeah, but that's for the future. He'll die in the future. Look at verse 15 in that very same chapter, and the very same thing says uh, about John the Baptist. Blessed be him. He, the day he was born, the day he dies, and the day he rises again. Are you going to say John the Baptist also is going to die and rise again in the future? So you can't have it both ways. It's very clear in chapter 19. That contradicts chapter 4, verse 157. You have two other verses, uh, chapter 3, verse 55, and chapter 5, verse 117. that said very clearly uh, that, that God, this is Allah, speaking to Jesus, speaking to Isa, says, I will cause you to die, mutawafika, I will cause you to die and bring you to myself. So it's not put to sleep, that's not the Arabic. I have people who say it's just saying put to sleep. Uh, they don't know the Arabic. So that's the first problem. There's an internal problem because the Quran cannot agree itself as to what is what really happened. Secondly is a theological problem. In the Quran it says very clearly uh, that chapter 6 verse 164 and chapter 53 verse 38 in the Quran it says that nobody can take on the guilt of another that we are responsible for our own guilt and therefore how could you know uh, how could Jesus take on the guilt of us how could someone die on the cross for us well that's not the real problem someone did die and it's very clear that someone did die on the cross that's even chapter 4 verse 157 says uh, someone did die but it was another person that died so that person is taking on the guilt of Jesus. There's another contradiction there. How could you have another person? How could Allah, as Muslims say, take the image of Jesus, put it on another person, and let that man die in Jesus' place? That is that is a theological contradiction because it confronts chapter 6, verse 164, and it confronts chapter 53, verse 38. That's the second problem. Number three, the historical problem. Historically speaking, the chapter 4, verse 157 stands against history. Historically speaking, it is very clear that Jesus did die. We don't have to go to the Bible itself to find that. Go outside of the Bible. Look at other historians of that time. People like Phlegon uh, and Thales, these two Greek uh, satirists who were having a debate in 52 AD. So this is just 20 years after Christ died. They were debating about the death of Jesus. And they were mentioning that when Jesus died, the earth shook and the sun went dark, which supports exactly what we see in the Matthew account. So here you have two Greekist uh, satirists who agreed that Jesus did die. That's Greek. Oh, what about Tacitus? Tacitus was a Roman historian, hated Christians. And yet he talks not only about the death of Jesus, he says it happened under Pontius Pilate during the reign of Tiberius. That's why we know it's in 33 AD. So here you have a Roman historian writing in the first century, uh, and he's talking about the death of Jesus. That's the second testimony. Oh, hold on. What about Josephus? Josephus was a Jewish historian living in Rome at the end of the first century, the beginning of the second century. He writes about the death of Jesus, and he mentions that also James about the death of James. And curiously, he also says that the Christians believe that this Jesus, this Christ, rose from the dead. The only non-biblical response or historical re reference we have to the resurrection. 
So you can see, as far as the historians are concerned, every historian believes and knows that Jesus did die. That's not in doubt. Only the Quran so, uh, does not support that, which shuts down its historicity. That's the third problem. The fourth problem is an even more difficult, and that is the eyewitness account. Not just the historical account, the eyewitness account. The Quran is writing 600 years later. Was there anything at the time? Was there anybody at that time who was writing who actually saw Jesus die? And the answer is yes. Look at John. John, who wrote about it in the Gospel of John. John was at the foot of the cross. He was there watching Jesus die. He, Jesus even spoke to him, telling him to take care of his mother. John would have known who Jesus was. He knew he was with him for three years. The last three years of his life, he would have certainly known who that man was on the cross. What about the mother of Jesus? She was also at the foot of the cross. Mary was right there looking up at her son. Don't you think a mother would know her own son? She had known him for 33 years. <laughs> so there's two eyewitness accounts that prove pretty clearly that they knew who was on the cross. Not someone else. It was their, her son and uh, John's best friend. And then finally, we get probably to the most difficult uh, problem, and that is the moral problem. So we've had the internal problem, we've had uh, the theological difficulties, we've had the historical problems, we've had the eyewitness problems, now we get to the moral problem. If God takes... Well, let's start with Jesus first. If this Jesus has another person die in his place, and then does not die but then goes up to the upper room three days later and shows himself to the disciples and claims that it was he, knowing that he wasn't, he hadn't died. What kind of prophet lies like that? What kind of prophet deceives like God? Not a prophet that I know, and certainly not Jesus. And what about Allah himself? If Allah takes the image, puts it on another man, has another man die in his place, and not tell anybody for 600 years, and then suddenly, 600 years later, he decides to tell this man in Arabia, who cannot even read or write the actual story, the true story, knowing that an entire religion has grown up over that one event. Christianity was created on the event of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and yet the God who created not only all of humanity, he also created Christianity and said nothing about it for 600 years. That is a deceitful God, and I want nothing to do with that God. That's the biggest problem, the moral problem. What kind of an immoral God would do that? See, do you see a problem? If you deny the death of Jesus and deny the resurrection of Jesus, you've not only denied his story, you've not only denied the, his, the eyewitness account, you've not only died, denied the theological problems or the internal problems, you also have accepted an immoral God, and I want nothing to do with that God, and neither should you. Why don't you come back to the God who did die for you? Why don't you come back to the God who actually died on the cross and rose again? What a God is it like that? There is no other God in the world. There's no other God in history. There is no other God that I've ever heard of that comes and dies in my place, takes on my sins, and forgives me because of that death. Ooh, can you then understand why this is so important to us? It's the most important time of the calendar. And I want it to be the most important time for the calendar for you as well. God bless you. This is Dr. J. Over and out. <laughs>